Alright, so what's up y'all? Uh Trey here again. Uh we're gonna do another video today. Uh today we're gonna be talking about my pocket 6k once again, as always. A lot of people really wanted to know like, you know, like the specifics on my on my rig, like what parts did I use, where did I get them from, like that type of thing. So hopefully this is helpful to somebody. Uh so let's get into it. Um so first things first is uh, let's talk about the body of the camera. So for the body, I have a uh, Tilt-A-Max cage. That's a full cage. Uh, it comes with the 15 millimeter rail system as well as the side handle and top handle. So the more weight that you have on your camera when you're doing handheld work, the more that it takes out the micro jitters. And the micro jitters are basically, when you're doing handheld work, it's just like those cheap looking shakes in your camera uh, that just makes it kind of look low budget. So we're gonna talk about my matte box. So my matte box, I have a uh, Fotga, I believe is how you pronounce it, a Fotga uh, DP500. Uh, this takes two uh, four by four filters that you can put in here. One actually uh, rotates. So if you have, you know, let's say like a kaleidoscope filter that, you know, you can turn them and do like get different uh, get different effects and stuff like that from it. So one of them does rotate. It does have the, uh, what do you call them, like flare cutters. It has three of them. So it has two that goes on the side uh, and it has one big one that goes across the top. I usually don't use the side ones, but I do use the top one a lot and it does make a tremendous difference uh, as far as cutting those flares out and adding a lot of more contrast to your shot. Uh, I think that's it on, oh, I forgot. So this thing does swivel out as well. The front does. You just pull up on this little latch right here and it swivels out. So it gives you easy access to your lens if you need to change our lenses, uh, you know, things like that. So I really do like it. Uh, what else we got here? I'm just gonna run through these real quick. So let's talk about power. How do I power this thing? So I use V-mount, as you can see. I have a V-mount battery on the back. My V-mount literally powers everything from the camera itself, of course, uh, my monitor, uh, my wireless transmitter, uh, my uh, Nucleus Nano follow focus. Uh, I mean, it literally handles everything. And I can still shoot with this thing for hours. Uh, this battery is a 154 watt hour battery. Um, I have a couple of these. These are... Miati, I believe is how you pronounce it. They're pretty big. Uh, again, I chose to get the big one. This is actually the medium size one. They make a smaller one that's about half the size of this, and then they make an even bigger one that's about a quarter size bigger than this one. But like I say, I like weight. So, of course, like I say, again, the more weight that you have on your handheld rig, the more professional your shots will look because it takes out those micro jitters. Let's see, what else we got? Oh yeah, yeah, so real quick. So cables, uh, I like to use, I forgot what you call them, but they're like these scrunchy type cables. To me, it just helps my rig stay, I don't know, just more neat. I hate cables, like, I hate cables. I hate when things look like sloppy and messy and all that. So I try to, I'm big on like organizing my cables and making sure that my cables are not everywhere. Um, so I like to use these scrunchy cables. Uh, I have a couple of them all over the rig. Uh, I believe the company that I use is like Alvin's. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, but they have very high quality cables. Um, uh, they're not that expensive. Maybe, I don't know, $14 a cable or something like that. But they're worth it. They're, you know, heavy duty. Um, you can pretty much order any size that you want to. So I like to order, I, li I like to have my cables as short as possible. So the shorter that I can get my cables, you know, the less extra cable that I have to worry about all over my rig. So I like to kind of, one second. All right, and we're back. Uh, this is Aubrey, by the way. All right, so can you say hey to the camera? She just woke up. All right. So, um, like I said, with Alvin's, you can order pretty much any, almost any size cable that you want. So if you want a, a cable that's, you know, three inches long, or if you want one that's eight inches long, you can kind of, you know, order that depending on how you want to rig out your rig. 
Uh, the next thing is my monitor. So for my monitor, I chose to go with a small HD. It's a seven inch, uh, 702 touch. It's 30, has weight to it again. Um, has HDMI in and out, SDI in and out as well. And I love that it has in and outs because I can actually send a signal out here to my wireless transmitters. All right, so now let's talk about my follow focus system. So my primary follow focus system is the ICANN Stratus. Um, it's very sturdy, it's all metal again for the most part. The actual dial here of course is rubber, uh, but everything else is pretty much metal, so it's pretty solid. Uh, so I do also have a Nucleus Nano uh, follow focus system on here as well. And the reason I have that one on here is that's the one I actually bought initially. And it kind of it kind of gave me a few issues like here and there as far as like connecting because it's supposed to be wireless. Um, and then you have to plug it into, you know, it has to have power to work as well. So at this point, basically, I have that one as a secondary. So if I want to, you know, if I have a first AC or something like that, who, who I need to pull focus for me. I can just quickly, you know, dismount of the ICANN and throw my nano nucleus on there uh, so that they can pull focus for me. And I don't have to worry about like taking stuff apart, putting it all together. I just keep it on there. All I have to do is plug it up and it's, and it's ready to go. So that's what I have for my follow focus system. Uh, I kind of talked about the, the transmitter. Basically what it is, it's a Mars 400S Pro from Hollyland. And that goes from my monitor uh, straight to the uh, transmitter and sends a signal out uh, to either a smartphone or uh, like I say, if I have a first AC uh, that they'll be actually pulling focus on. <clears throat> so for audio, uh, audio I have uh, the Sennheiser MKH416. This is a shotgun mic uh, and it just goes basically from, you know, XLR to a mini XLR on the uh, Blackmagic. The sound quality of this is amazing. This is actually like one of the best, you know, shotgun mics in the industry right now. So uh, another thing that a lot of people ask me about, I guess because they're not really used to seeing it, is I have a preamp uh, on the back of my mon on the back of my camera as well, and this is a Beach Tech DXA Micro Plus. Um, it's a pretty good uh, preamp. Uh, a good friend of mine, Kel Bonton, Bonton Media, uh, put me on this uh, about a year or so ago. And uh, it is a game changer. Even if I'm not using it, I'll still keep it on there just for the weight. And so that actually screws on to the back of the uh, V-mount plate here. Um, one thing I didn't talk about with the actual tilted cage is that it also comes with the V-mount uh, attachment here. And so that's very important. Uh, one thing about my V-mount attachment is when I first bought it, it's actually made to sit flat. And... I don't like how it looks whenever it's flat, honestly. Like I'm real picky about how my stuff looks. So I did have to do like a bit of like sanding some stuff down and like tweaking some stuff and like screwing some new holes and stuff like that just to make it to where it would actually sit up vertical like this. I'm able to make it, make my rig way more compact and uh, you know, it just balances the weight on it better as well for me. So bye. you saying bye already? We're not done yet. Uh, for storage, I use uh, Samsung T5s. Uh, I have a couple of these. These are the two terabyte versions. Um, I don't know. I mean, I like them. They've worked for me pretty fine, pretty good. I haven't had any issues with them uh, since I've had them. So that's what I use for storage. Uh, I've shot literally 6K, you know, freaking two to one compression on it, 50 frames a second, and it's handled it fine. So I think that's it. So, man, if y'all have any questions about my rig, man, just hit me up in the comments. Uh, send me a message, man. I would love to, you know, talk about a rig. Maybe I can help y'all build y'all's out. Like I said, I'll try to put a link in the description for literally everything that I have on this rig for y'all to buy. Uh, I'll probably put a few affiliate links. So, if you do want to buy anything, please just buy it from, you know, the link. That way I can get, like, a little bit of kickback off of that. That would be greatly appreciated. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, yeah. So that's my rig. Um, 
I went through a lot of trial and error. Like when I first got this thing, I had to build out so many different ways. And now when I look back on it, I'm like, it looked super whack back then. But I don't know. I really like how it looks. Um, of course, everybody knows that the dreaded thing about the Black Magic cameras is just like the form factor and just, you know, the way it looks. It's just an awkward built camera. And so it, it just looks weird sometimes. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can inspire somebody to build theirs to where, you know, they actually like the way it looks. So I'm happy with the way it looks. Um, you know, it looks like a more boxier camera and that's what I like. So, uh, yeah, man, man, y'all subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment. If y'all like the video, like it. If you don't like it, let me know in the comments and we can talk trash back and forth because I'm good at that. Um, but yeah, so that's it, man. Uh, thank y'all for watching. And I hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a good one. Say bye.